welcome everyone to the March edition of AZ Bio Peers. And today our subject is charting your path, navigating local grants and programs here in Arizona. And I'm thrilled to have with us today our esteemed panel of speakers, Jill Howard Allen from the Arizona Commerce Authority, Juliet Gomez from the Flynn Foundation, Natalie Mitchell from AZ Bio and the, cha the coordinator of our AZ Bio Peers program, and Tom Schumann from CEI, the Center for Entrepreneurial Innovation. So with that, and we'll be turning it over to Jill, who is going to kick us off. All right, eight o'clock, Tuesday morning. <laughs> Good morning, perfect. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. So um, charting your own path, um, I am here to talk about the SBIR STTR program and the Arizona FAST grants that we have available. So thought I'd give a little bit of background on what SBIR and STTR, so next slide, please. We can first just start, what the heck is SBIR? STTR. SBIR stands for Small Business Innovation Research and Small Business Technology Transfer. They are federal grants that are um, awarded through different federal funding agencies. And they're great grants in that they are funding early stage uh, technology. Next slide, please. They're funded through 11, uh, these are the different uh, 11 funding agencies. And I want you to take a look at all of these because even though they, um, it might be the Department of Defense and you might not think that they are applicable to what you're doing, you might wanna dig a little deeper. And so by finding out a little bit more about the SBIR program, um, doing a little bit of work in advance is going to help you across the board, not only with the grants that we have available, but hopefully being successful in your SBIR award as well. Next slide, please. So the requirements are that you are a for-profit company under 500 people. The work is done here in the U.S. and it's performing R&D, not purchasing equipment and things like that. It's awarded in three phases. Uh, phase one is a proof of concept, and phase two is the prototype, and then phase three is a full commercialization. So um, next slide, please. So the most, that my favorite part about the SBIRS TTR program is it's non-diluted capital. That means uh, there's no ownership stake here with uh, these funding agencies. This is your company and your innovation, um, which is really nice. Uh, it really helps get the funding that you need for that early stage innovation. And then um, I think another maybe question or misunderstanding is the IP or the data rights. Um, once you get to the full commercialization, they're protected for 20 years. And that's yours. Um, the, um, the other thing is that this non-dilutive funding is a nice foundation for any additional type of funding that you might need, whether angel, venture capital, um, whatever that might be. And I think we're gonna get into a little bit more information here later in my slides about some things that the different federal agencies have been doing in terms of matching funds. The other thing about the SBIR program is that it's vetted technology. You have the National Science Foundation or the National Institute of Health that is, is basically saying, yeah, this is approved uh, technology that we vetted and approved for the research. Next slide, please. Um, so with that, how do I go about getting this? Well, the SBA Small Business Administration runs the, the SBIR STTR program. And it is, as you've kind of already gotten a taste here, if you're not familiar, a little bit of a, a process and a little bit of a complex um, grant to pursue. So what the SBA did is they funded different agencies across the state, across the US, that would be able to assist with this. 
And we have been awarded the FAST grant. And what that does is, and FAST stands for Federal and State Technology Assistance. And the FAST award has us focusing on three things, which is outreach, promoting the program, um, just like we're doing now, uh, technology and business assistance. So um, providing education, workshops, those types of things, and financial support, which is probably why all of you are here some small grants that help assist in uh, making your SBIR as TTR proposal successful. Next slide, please. Um, in the past, the Arizona Commerce Authority has been the recipient of the FAST grant award. And we mostly focused on workshops, some small grants, um, and uh, with, that allowed for grant writers and uh, national conference reimbursement. Um, this approach we're doing a little bit differently because I think what we've seen is that this program really does take a village. This is a group effort and team effort. So what we've tried to do is partner with a lot of the different organizations like AZ Bio to help not only promote the program, but also the amazing resources that AZ Bio and others have support that and be able to uh, cross-reference across the state so that the um, resources, expertise, mentors that they have um, here can be shared across the state. Incubators and accelerators, we're in a virtual um, world now and being able to share that, um, it makes Arizona stronger in general. So what this means for you, what this means for you is that with this fund, we've been able to create the um, Innovation Network site for SBIR resources um, that has some trainings, videos of past webinars and workshops, um, access to mentors, and more. It's also a place where you can apply for our FAST grant, which is a $3,000 grant um, that you can use for your SBIR proposal development. Um, we are also opening up an SBIR conference registration reimbursement grant so that you can attend the SBIR national conference and have the registration paid uh, through the grant. Next slide, please. So what, uh, what, how do you go about being successful with these grants? First of all, just like everything, read the application um, and identify your SBIR support partners. Accelerators, universities, experts like AZ Bio um, show that you've got some other folks that can help you with this process. And familiarize yourself with the SBIR program. Check out sbir.gov, re review past awards that are similar in the field so that you understand how you what you're proposing will be bigger, better, stronger, faster. Um, identify different funding agencies. Again, I think you might be surprised at the different um agencies and the type of technology that they've funded um, it might open you up to a different um, agency maybe competitive level uh, for your um, technology and then identify the usage of funds how are you going to use this money grant writer access to facilities what is it next slide please so um, again, part of the uh, grant has given us the ability to promote uh, access and technical assistance. Uh, we have a couple of webinars coming up uh, through the Arizona Tech Council that we've partnered with. One that I think of particular interest to this group is the National Science Foundation on March 23rd at 10 a.m. Um, AZ Bio has these slides and those links are in my presentation for you to access and these are free so how can you resist um, another webinar that we have coming up is with the department of agriculture on april 19th again for free check it out um, connections it's all about who you know learn more about what these folks are looking for you're going to be speaking directly to the folks from these agencies find out what they're interested in uh, reference that you're learning this they want to see that. The Arizona Commerce Authority is also um, uh, setting up some workshops that'll be for free. And look at this. We have a NSF pitch proposal workshop coming up on March 31st. How do you make your pitch perfect? 
for the NSF. How do you write your proposal? Learn and find out for free here. Uh, we have a data rights and a university consultant SBIR partnerships coming up soon too. Uh, conferences. Uh, there's a uh, Tech Council MedTech Conference coming up June 8th. Uh, watch from the Tech Council for details coming soon. The National SBIR Conference is June 13th through the 15th at National Harbor in D.C. Uh, you can meet directly with the program managers, uh, businesses, and other awardees. Networking. Learn more. Uh, next slide, please. And um, also find about some of the other funding options above and beyond SBIR. Um, get access to some of the expertise on maybe an STTR through university partnerships. Um, find some talent, interns, um, maybe other team members. Access core facilities. Um, ASU has some core facilities that are available at a nonprofit rate. Even though you are a for business organization, these profit nonprofit rates are much lower. Learn more about that. These are some of the types of facilities. Um, and then other SBIR money, uh, technical and business assistance funding through some of the different funding agencies that provide money to marketing, market research through your phase one and phase two. Um, matching funds from different agencies. If you um, receive investment or other funding, uh, some of these agencies will match this on a, fast, on a phase two. I-Corps, um, business training. So there's a lot of other programs that are tied to the SBIR that can help you fund your innovation. Next slide, please. Um, and of course, the different organizations like AZ Bio, um, the SBDC. Lou Farina has received SBIR awards in the past and will review proposals for free. PTAC assists with SAM registration, DUNS, and business certifications. Check out your incubators and, and accelerators. I know Tom's gonna talk about CEI. Learn more about the assistance that they can provide, um, as well as the um, universities I had mentioned earlier. Next slide, please. And then build your network. I said this takes a village, build it. Um, find out how SBIR fits in your funding strategy. It's one element of a funding strategy. Learn how that can be best, most beneficial for you. Um, check out the grants available. Re familiarize yourself with the SBIR program and learn and educate yourself to make it a stronger application. Next slide, please. And give me a call. If you have any questions, email me, call me. That's what I'm here for. Thank you. Questions? <laughs> so we're going to leave our questions to the end, but don't forget to put your, your questions for Jill in the chat. And with that, um, we are going to turn it over to the wonderful Juliet Gomez from the Flynn Foundation. Take it away, Juliet. Thank you, Joan. Um, I'll start out by talking about the Flynn Foundation, which was started in 1965 by cardiologist Dr. Robert Flynn and his wife, Irene. This is a, um, an endowed foundation, so we don't do fundraising. It was mainly focused on the biosciences, but three more grant-making pillars have been added over the years, and many of you have heard of the Flynn Scholars Program. We also have arts programs and the Flynn Brown Civic Leadership Program. Next slide. In 2002, Flynn commissioned Arizona's Bioscience Roadmap which is the long-term strategic plan for the biosciences in our state. This plan was updated in 2014 with the goal of Arizona becoming globally competitive and a national leader in select areas of the biosciences by 2025. The roadmap features five overarching goals as well as strategies and potential actions to help the state achieve this vision. The goals include forming an entrepreneurial hub, turning research into practice, developing biotalent, promoting Arizona's convergence of research, healthcare, and commercialization to economic partners in neighboring states, Canada, and Mexico, and enhancing the state's collaborative gene reputation. Next slide. I'm going to tell you about two of our flagship grant programs under the bioscience pillar. These are both non-diluted funding opportunities. 
The first is the Bioscience Entrepreneurship Program. This program was created to satisfy goal number one of forming a hub of bioscience entrepreneurs, or as I like to call them, biopreneurs. The award is given to six firms with a seventh in exceptional cases. Funding is $30,000 each with an additional $3,500 in a professional development fund. This can be used to attend a conference, hire a consultant, or anything that may pop up and is not accounted for in the original budget. An experienced advisor or mentor is assigned for a year to assess the company and help the founders on their path to commercialization. AZ Bio is our great grant administrator and also graciously contributes one year membership to each of the program participants. Now all participants are given a seat on the Bioscience Roadmap Steering Committee, which is made up of about 130 of some of the top movers and shakers in Arizona's bioscience related communities, including hospitals, universities, the legislature and more. And finally, there are plenty of opportunities for connections and events. Next slide. We just completed selections for the ninth cycle of our program. We've had applications in all areas of the biosciences, including animal health and agriculture. We have selected 54 firms for the program, and that includes three companies that have been since acquired. Next slide. Participants of the program have told us that the benefits they received most included increased credibility, getting to participate on the steering committee, the funding, introductions, local recognition, and access to resources. Now, I like to tell biopreneurs that my job is not solely to help Flynn program participants. If you need a resource or a possible introduction, call or email me. I'm available to help all biopreneurs succeed. Next slide. Now, the second program is the Translational Research Seed Grants Program. This satisfies goal number two of research into practice. This program gives up to 10 projects, $100,000 each for an 18 month period. There is an entrepreneurship element to get the researchers thinking about the translational or commercialization aspects of their projects. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> At the end of the 18 months, two teams are eligible for follow on funding of another $100,000 each for 12 months. Now this grant is specifically for research teams affiliated with Arizona's academic research institutions and or healthcare systems. But one note here, there are times when a very early stage company may be able to apply for both programs. For instance, if a company is established but there is still significant research being done by the principal investigator within the university or one of the hospital systems, they can also apply for the Translational Research Seed Grants Program. We have a couple of established companies that are currently receiving the funding because their CEOs are professors at ASU and U of A. Both of these programs accept applications and will open in the fall. Check our website for news on the RFPs. Next slide. Now there are two key statements that will help you move further in these two programs. For entrepreneurs, it's your value proposition. And as the person who has to compile the feedback from the reviewers, I can tell you this is a sore spot. A great template for a value proposition is the Jeffrey Moore statement. You need to identify who your target customer is, the statement of need, the product or service, the type of product or service, the solution, and how yours differs from the competition or what is already the standard solution. Here's an example using Uber. For traveling adults who need low cost on demand ground transportation, Uber is the transportation network that conveniently eliminates the frustrations of travel. Unlike taxis, Uber is easy to order and requires no physical transactions to book or pay for the ride. Now a good value proposition will help you throughout your commercialization process. So make sure it is clear to anyone who hears it. Next slide. Now for the Translational Seed Grants Program or TSG as I refer to it, a good clinical need statement is very important. The clinical need has to say what problem it solves, who it affects and how the outcome can be measured. Here's a good example, and by the way, they usually start with the words a way to or a way for, 
So here's an example. Product X is a better way to detect potential rhythm disturbances in non-hospitalized patients with suspected arrhythmias to improve the patient experience and reduce the cost of diagnosis. Now, these are project, projects that are rooted in solving a real clinical need. Next slide. I'm happy to help with any questions about either program, or if you need a resource, please contact me. There's my email address, as well as the two web pages for the programs I mentioned. If all else fails, just go to flynn.org, and that's Flynn with an I. I also have an outlook group of biopreneurs and researchers that I send emails to about funding opportunities, webinars, programs, and more that I learn about from the many e-newsletters I receive. I try to only send things that may be of interest to all or most of you. If you're interested in being on this list, and I know some of you already are, please email me and I will add you. And next slide. Finally, two events I wanna tell you about. Next Friday, March 25th, we will be holding our fourth annual Arizona Biopreneur Conference in person at 850 PBC in downtown Phoenix. Now this is our first in-person event in two years and we are really excited to get biopreneurs together to connect with each other. This event is in conjunction with the Bioscience Roadmap Steering Committee's Entrepreneurship Project Team, the Center for Entrepreneurial Innovation, and ASU's Health Entrepreneurship Accelerator Lab. We will be having some great speakers, including Moira Gunn from NPR's Biotech Nation and Tech Nation, as well as sessions on regulatory, working with hospitals and medical centers, IP, and more. It will end with a networking reception. There will be plenty of resource people, including investors, attending this event. I'll put the link to the registration in the chat, and we would be, be delighted if you could join us. Also, if you are, um, also I want to say that you are all invited to Arizona's roadmap update on April 20th. Now, this event is in partnership with the Arizona Bioscience Roadmap Steering Committee. It will be on Zoom, and the latest progress of Arizona's bioscience sector will be presented by Techonomy Partners, which is a global leader in research, analysis, and strategy for innovation-based economic development. And we are celebrating our 20th anniversary with the roadmap, and we'll be discussing the data and how far the biosciences have come in Arizona. Three of Arizona's great industry thought leaders will be on a panel giving context to the data, as well as their perspectives on what's next. This is a great opportunity to learn more about the biosciences in Arizona. And again, I'll put the link in the chat. Thank you. Thank you, Juliet. That was terrific. And um, those are wonderful opportunities for all of our entrepreneurs to participate in. And now I am going to switch us over to Dr. Natalie Mitchell, who is going to talk about the AZ Bio Peers Mentoring Program. Good morning, everyone. I'm Natalie Mitchell, Entrepreneurial Program and Grants Manager here at AZ Bio. I have two great programs to share with you this morning, uh, both of which could help build connections and grow your business. Next slide, please. The first program I wanted to talk about is the AZ Bio Peers Mentoring Program. This is a goal-focused group mentoring program where each mentee entrepreneur gets matched with a team of three to six mentors, depending on the company's business needs and, uh, and areas of focus. We match you with experienced mentors with expertise in areas where help is needed. And the mentors can help you make connections, refine your story, identify opportunities for growth, and any other things that you need help with uh, for growing your business. This program is designed for companies of any size, uh, and there's no cost to apply or take part in this program. It's a really fabulous opportunity. Uh, so if you're interested, we're now accepting for the July to December cohort. Uh, the com minimum commitment we ask for mentors, uh, if you're interested in mentoring, is approximately one hour per month for six months. Uh, however, the mentee entrepreneurs in the program need to be prepared to put in the time uh, needed to carry out action items that are suggested by the mentors. Also, companies are welcome to stay in the mentoring program for more than six months if they would like to continue. Uh, next slide, please. As to the focus areas uh, that the mentors can help with, uh, here are a number of 
uh, the expertise areas that uh, and focus areas that are available. Uh, we are also always on the lookout for new mentors as well if you need air, uh, help in areas that are not listed. Uh, we, um, again, we will be accepting uh, Minty entrepreneurs for the July, December cohort uh, here soon. So if you're interested in the program, feel free to email me at natalie at azbio.org or go on to our uh, website at that link uh, shown here. I'll also put it in the chat in a little bit. Um, to register on the website, there's a little two question form uh, that can submit your interest for the program. Uh, next slide, please. The, Second program that I wanted to talk to you about is the AZ Advances Talent Inter Internship Program. So this is a, a program that's currently under development. We are working with philanthropists in the legislature to provide funding for this program. It will provide no cost interns to life science companies in Arizona. So this program aims to do two main things. Firstly, it will provide high school and university students the opportunity to obtain real world experience within a company. Uh, helping them to explore career paths and strengthen their educational uh, applications and build a resume. Next slide, please. Uh, secondly, it will provide no cost interns uh, to life science companies in Arizona, um, often who may not have the resources to develop or maintain a quality internship program on their own. Uh, so if your company would be interested in a, a no cost intern, uh, please email me at natalie at azbio.org or um, go to our webpage, uh, which is linked at the bottom of the, the slide there, and I'll also put it in the chat in a little bit. Uh, we, there are different uh, roles that the interns can take, um, so if there's anything that is of interest to you, please uh, submit your interest. Uh, so thank you very much and have a great day. Great job, Natalie. Thank you so much. And now we're going to switch over and put Mr. Schumann in the spotlight as he takes us through some of the programs available from CEI. Well, thank you, Joni, and I'm uh, really glad to be speaking with this group today. Um, yeah, CEI, we are the uh, business incubator that serves the bioscience and medical device industries here in Phoenix. And, and as such, you know, we we do a lot with helping people um, move through the commercialization process of their technologies. And, and a large part of that is helping to make sure that they have the funding strategy to get them through the two to three years uh, to get to market. And so I think the first thing I would say is, you know, you know, all of the above, you know, every program that uh, was mentioned from Natalie, Juliet and Jill are all things that um, our clients and your clients, you know, should be taking um, advantage of. And I know there's, some people on the call, like um, uh, 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 Don from uh, Beacon, uh, I think he's participated in almost all of those programs. So that kind of shows you know, how you can get it done. Um, so what I wanted to do today is kind of highlight a couple of the different kinds of things that people often are unaware of and don't take advantage of. Um, because one of the rules of thumb, excuse me, one second. I have a dog that likes to bark when I start talking. So excuse me uh, for having to get up to get shadow out of here. Um, um, but what I wanted to do is highlight some of the, the lesser known kinds of programs that, that people can take advantage of. You know, one of the rules of thumbs that we use at CEI is it's gonna take two and a half times more funding than you think it is to get your product to market. So you have to look at all the potential avenues. So some of the things that are out there include, you know, the pitch contests, you know, these are sometimes just five or $10,000, but that's enough to keep your, your team on payroll uh, for a couple of more months. And so whether it's ASU Venture Devils or other programs like that, it's a really good source for, for young entrepreneurs, young researchers to get some additional support. There's also um, a large number of industry specific accelerator programs <clears throat> that are both here in Arizona, but also nationwide. For example, Mayo has an accelerator program for, for medical devices. Um, one of our companies, Researcher, is participating in that, and that brings them some additional resources uh, and exposure to free expertise that they would not be able to get otherwise. Um, and then there's also a, a number of uh, uh, programs like Y Combinator and Techstars, who are more international programs that have really industry-specific uh, programs that can bring some funding into companies and help connect them also to key resources. Um, 
another area that we uh, see few companies taking advantage of is the support for workforce training. You know, what through your city and county workforce development agencies, there's training available for new workers and incumbent workers to either bring them on board or upskill. So if you're bringing in, let's say, an engineer from an industry that is not FDA regulated, you can use you know training dollars to get that individual up to speed um, in those kinds of areas. So there's those kinds of workforce um, opportunities as well. We have our lab force program where we have um, a large, I think, about 400 courses now online for people to take advantage of. And later in the fall, we'll be opening up a lab in the downtown where we'll have hands-on training for, for laboratory technicians. And many scholarships are available uh, for that program as well. So you can get some, uh, uh, some training for free. Um, and then the final thing that I wanted to mention um, was uh, the SBDC network. And, and Jill Howard kind of referred to it a, a little bit. But it really is, it, it's free one-on-one -on -one counseling that's available on a whole variety of topics, you know, from HR, accounting, sales, and marketing. Um, and so it's, it's, it's free. So it's a great resource. Um, but as Jill mentioned, uh, both Lou Farina and uh, Tom Fulcher, who are SBDC counselors, are both very successful in both the AIC programs and the SBIR programs. So, so reach out to um, the SBDC network. Um, they also are launching a new program called AERO, A-E-R-O. And under AERO, they're ha having um, startup small businesses help other startup small businesses. And what they're doing is they're making um, grant stipends available from one company uh, to help another company. So example is if you need a website, they will find a website company that they will pay to help you get your website up and running. So it's another free resource that, that can save your dollars. Um, so you'll hear more about Aero uh, in the coming months. But I know if you go to um, azsbdc.org, um, I believe is their URL, you'll be able to find out more about that program. And finally, um, we've been designated by the SBDC as a specialty center uh, in the state of Arizona to provide technology commercialization services statewide. So we will now be working through the 10 existing SBDC centers to provide um, the expertise, whether it's patent attorneys, um, FDA consultants or whatever, to um, technology companies you know, anywhere in the state of Arizona. Because one of the things that we learned as we came through the pandemic was that you know innovation doesn't have to happen you know in downtown phoenix anymore you can be in prescott you can be in yuma you can be in st john's and have a technology startup but you don't have the resources uh, like we have here in the city so um, uh, we're using our our virtual incubation platform to get coaching and counseling out throughout the state um, and because it is coming through the sbdc a, a large part of that is also going to be offered for free um, those are my comments, Joan, um, and looking forward to take questions. Welcome back, everyone. And with that, we're going to move to the chat. And we have a bunch of questions, so let's get started. So, um, you know, as we talk about these programs, um, you know, Jill, the SBIR program and specifically some of the SBIR programs at the agencies that have the phase, direct to phase two program, can you talk a little bit about how those programs um, are available to our companies? Um, yes, so different agencies have the ability to go directly from phase one into a phase two, or there is also the potential for a phase one from one agency to be funded by another agency for phase two. Um, I would honestly say the best way about looking into something like that is talking to your SBIR program manager. Um, you're gonna wanna um, basically make sure that you kind of have the confidence from the SBIR funding agency and understand exactly your vision so that you're on the same page. So having that relationship with the funding agency and SBIR program manager is the best way to go about that. I put a link in the chat to the SBIR.gov site that has the information on where you can find some more, just a little bit of background. Um, 
and I also do want to promote um, the uh, AZ Bio uh, NIH SBIR event. That, that's huge. Take advantage of these types of events. Um, Joan and Natalie are working hard to get um, program managers available to you. This is an amazing resource. Use it. Thank you so much, Jill. And um, another question for Jill. Um, people get really confused between SBIR and STTR. And when does a university have to be involved and when doesn't it? Can you kind of cl clarify that? Sure. So the SBIR program is Small Business Innovation Research and that um, does not require a university partnership. Uh, but a uh, STTR, uh, Small Business Technology Transfer, so think technology transfer out of a university. Doesn't have to be that specific thing, but that's how I always remember the difference between the two. That does require a, a partnership with the university or a, uh, a like a research lab. Uh, so that does require the relationship there. Terrific. Thanks so much, Jill. Juliet. Um, you talked a little bit about the Arizona Biopreneur Conference. What are the big challenges that um, our companies have? And you shared kind of how to do your value statement, you know, et cetera, is how to tell their story. What's an opportunity at the Biopreneur Conference that's really valuable in that area? Well, I think that's going to be our keynote speaker, and um, that's Moira Gunn, again, from NPR. She's also the Director of Bioentrepreneurship at the University of San Francisco. And I personally heard her at um, the Entrepreneurship Boot Camp at Bio International Convention in 2018, and she was amazing. There are still things I remember from her, her talk, and she will talk to you about um, how to tell your story not only to the media, but to investors, to anyone who has a part in making your a business or product a success. And um, we will also be having, we're not advertising this, but if you're interested, we are having a pre-conference at 10 a.m. that day on March 25th with Moira. It's gonna be a small group of about 20 people. And she's going to be, speaking directly to those biopreneurs that are attending on how to tell their story and how to make it clear and concise. So if you are interested in being a part of that um, pre-conference, let me know. I'll again put my email in the um, chat and I see um, that uh, marketing help that Kurt mentioned, yes, and she'll be able to talk about that. I think um, that's one thing that I've seen a lot of biopreneurs have some issues with is marketing their product. And, and I think that um, Moira is going to be a big help in that. So if you can attend, we'd love to have you. Great. Thank you, Juliet. And, you know, gang, one of the things that you're going to hear from Moira is that earned media is way more valuable than anything that you can buy because that is accreditation from a third party as opposed to what you're saying about yourself. And so you have a fantastic opportunity right now for two areas of earned media. One is that applications are open for the Easy Bio Awards that will be held in person at the Phoenix Convention Center during Arizona Bioscience Week. And those companies are going to have videos about them. Those companies are going to have press releases about them. And so applying for that opportunity is huge. And it is open right now. Don't miss it. Go to azbioawards.com. The other is you need to make sure that you're getting your message to the person who needs to hear it. And so for those of you that are looking for money, which is most of you, um, I encourage you to apply for the White Hat Life Science Investor Conference, which is whitehatinvestors.com. And if you forget these websites, you just go to EasyBio's website and go to the events drop down and you'll see them. 
so in the case of White Hat, we are going to select 32 companies from across the region that will have the opportunity to present to investors. Now, not everybody's going to get chosen. But everybody that applies is going to have their application vetted by a panel of investors from across the country, which means that they're all going to see you. So it's critically important that you apply even if you don't think you're going to win. And Natalie's working on the AZ Advances Innovation Showcase, which is going to be in the Phoenix Convention Center right before the AZ Bio Awards. And if you don't make it to the final list for White Hat, you might make it to the final list for the Innovation Showcase. So those are opportunities where you need to apply now because once those application windows close, that's a missed opportunity. So make sure that you take advantage of that. All right. And don't forget that in the chat we are still taking questions and there are some very useful links for you to copy. Um, so Tom, uh, training dollars. Where can people find more information about training dollars? John, one of the uh, places they can check is the, the City of Phoenix and their Workforce Development Department. They will have links there. And, and again, they offer up to 50% of training uh, dollars for incumbent and, and, and uh, new workers. Um, and I believe at the county workforce development levels, you can find those same kinds of resources. Great. Thanks, Tom. And um, for, for all of the panel. Um, one of our nonprofits is asking, they, they are developing virtual cancer caregiver programs um, to help the family members and friends who are helping our cancer patients through some of the most difficult times in their life. Um, where can nonprofits go to find funding, grants, or, or other resources to help them further their products and their mission? Uh, I'll jump in. Uh, as, as a coming from a nonprofit ourselves, uh, going to philanthropists, going to looking for uh, community giving programs, those are often great ways uh, to to find funding. Uh, it takes a lot of uh, research. Unfortunately, I haven't found a uh, centralized repository for these grants. Um, um, maybe someone has uh, a link for, that, that they can share. Um, and if anyone comes across it, please share it with me as well. Um, but it really does take a, um, share, uh, you know, a lot of searching uh, for uh, philanthropic organizations, grant bodies, various other things that um, coincide with your mission and, and fund, uh, fund grants for your mission. And you, you have to be persistent. Whether you are starting a small company or running a nonprofit, and take my word for it, I run too. Um, it is always challenging. Tom's nodding his head because he knows too. It's always challenging to find the right partner for the right resource. Um, as Natalie said, doing your homework, casting that net wide is very, very important. The other thing that's critically important is to get your, sto to get your story out in a clear, concise way that um, either a venture capitalist, an angel investor, or a philanthropist understands. Um, so AZ Bio is currently supporting the opportunity through Entrepreneurship Foundation um, on our AZ Advances initiative. And you can learn more about that at azadvances.org. Um, that program is designed to fund early stage companies in Arizona forever. It is designed to work with our research partners to determine what is coming out of the research institutes, which is ready for prime time. And lastly, the program Natalie shared with you, which is AZ Advances Talent, which has three components. The connections that you've seen for a decade at the Student Discovery Zones, which has now had more than a thousand students go through it. That is being followed up by the new program, which is the internship program, because what we're finding is there are inconsistencies in the programs that are developed at small companies, and you have problems paying the interns. And so that program is addressing those two programs. And then here's the big kicker, which is 
when those students discover that, yes, this is the industry they want to be in, some of them don't have the financial resources to get to the end. And so the scholarship program is something that is open to everyone. And as a matter of fact, Arizona Gives Day, which is for all a broad range of Arizona nonprofits, is kicking off today. And for those of you that follow me on Facebook or follow us on Twitter, you'll be seeing some information about that. But you know, if you're a nonprofit, this is for nonprofits, you need to try different things. You need to try Arizona Gives Day. You have to be persistent. Keep doing it. Get your social media up. You need to reach out to funders. You need to reach out and try new things. AZ Advances and OTAF, its sponsor, tried cryptocurrency as a fundraising strategy starting in 2021. We got our biggest donation was in cryptocurrency. So the one person donated more cryptocurrency at the end of 2021 than every single person in Arizona had, had donated to date one donor. So you have to catch, you've got to try new things. You have to cast your net wide. And that applies to our for-profit companies and it applies to our nonprofit initiatives. You have to try new things. You have to build relationships. You have to be persistent and you have to be patient because it's not always going to happen overnight. Okay, let's see what we have here. Um, Oh, look at that. Thank you, Kurt. We have uh, uh, one of our attendees has actually um, popped in to the chat, Kurt, and said that, uh, you know, that he has a marketing firm that is willing to help and focused on bio. So you guys might want to check out his link. Thank you for volunteering, Kurt. So is there any, are there any more questions? Um, if anybody wants to unmute and ask more questions of the panel, um, now's a perfect opportunity. Um, I see Julie Hoffman has uh, provided a question here. Is there a biocentric grant writing and reporting support available? Uh, I know several grant funded uh, projects that uh, suffer as researchers devote more and more time to admin requirements. Um, so I think, Jill, uh, I think the, the FAST grant might be applicable here um, somewhat. Would that, do you think that would be beneficial here? Yeah. Um, so we do have a list of resources, and we'll, I'll put that in the chat here in a second, um, for various grant writers that um, have really more focused on SBIR, but I think they also work with other programs as well. Um, and we'll put that in the link there, but it is it is tough. Um, and the, I do understand that our grant does not cover probably what grant writers are making right now. Um, but I think Tom said this too, you know, hey, it's uh, $3,000 you didn't have before. So um, keep that in mind. And um, also, I'm going to stress the SBDC and PTAC offices. Um, they have really done a good job of recruiting employees there that understand the grant process and have um, experience as reviewers as well. Um, so take advantage of that. They might, they're not going to write it for you, uh, but they will assist in uh, reviewing it, um, at which can help as well. But I know, Julie, that that is tough. I, I would also suggest reaching out to other people you know who received grants and find out how they um, wrote their grant or who they used, because I know um, incubators will help and um, like PTAC and, and a lot of different organizations have resources to help you. But I think a recommendation is always the best thing. Yeah, Juliet, that's exactly what I was going to say. We have um, a number of clients in our incubator who are successful with SBIR grants, and they all review each other's grants before they submit them. They offer comments to each other. So they kind of, you know, in-house peer review is, is really valuable uh, when you can connect with, uh, yeah, successful SBIR uh, recipients. So that might be a good workshop coming up is getting these people together just to share. Um. Yes, uh, so I'm going to plug another AZ Bio event here. Um, part 
part two of, um, and I'm putting that link in the chat here, uh, part two of the, are you thinking about an SBIR, STTR, is uh, we are gonna have a, a, a panel of four uh, speakers who come from organizations that have between them uh, several dozen successful uh, grants and they will be talking about what is their secret sauce what you know tips tricks um, things to, to think about uh, when writing uh, grants um, so, you, so that might be of interest i was also going to say and, and no offense to cei but um, the university of arizona's center for Inter um, for innovation um, they've been having monthly um, talks um, called Sipping on Success, and it's always one person who has been successful at getting an SBIR and talking about their experience. So um, I'll see if I can find information on that and um, put it in the chat. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to our speakers. You all did an awesome job today. Um, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.